Hi friends, welcome to the Plain Fun RC channel. I'm your host, Saul, and we are continuing the build of the AM-TN Burt Rutan Beechcraft Starship, and we've started on the fuselage. So you can see here we've got a couple of pieces. We've got F1 and we have F2, and these get joined right here, right in the joints. And then what we did is we went ahead, we popped out all the fuselage formers so we could sand off any of the little uh, connecting tabs that connected to the actual sheets. And you can see we've got a tin full of uh, fuselage formers. So let's go ahead. Let's continue our build of the fuselage and more to come. All right, friends, as we continue the update on the AMT and Beechcraft Starship, we're focusing on the fuselage and we we're going with the installation of the canard. And I want to talk, talk to you about that because it's a very unique way that the canard is installed. What it is is that you have this wonderful former, this F7 former here, okay? And you also have your canard, and you have, you have your uh, former up here, F4. Now, with this particular uh, canard, it also includes these saddles here, these F22 saddles, and they are angled in such a way so as to give the canard a six degrees positive incidence. All canards require positive incidence. Some require one and a half degrees, some require two degrees. This one requires six degrees. Now, with this particular saddle, one of the things that we need to do is we need to sand a little bit up in here, and I'll show you in a second, to help uh, compensate for the angle of the actual uh, of the actual canard, with a swept back angle of the canard. Now, let me show you how we install this. It's really unique. We have our dowel right here, and the dowel is going to get inserted in, into F4. So we're going to take that, we're going to insert that right into F4. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take F7. And before putting uh, attaching F7, take a moment to draw a center line. And I'll show you why in a second why the center line is so important. <clears throat> now, we're going to take F7 and we're going to slide the trailing edge through these open slots here on F7, just like so. And then we're going to make sure, making sure our canard is as far forward as possible in the opening for the dowel. We're going to take F7 and we're going to insert it into the pre-cut slots in the fuselage itself. There we go. Perfect. All right. So now here's why. Here's why the center line is so important. Let me grab the camera and I'll show you real quick. So with the canard, if you look at where the at where the sheeting meets, that is in essence the center line of the canard. And you'll notice right now that that particular center line where the sheeting meets does not match up with the center line here. And that's not a problem. So all we need to do is just take our canard very gently. We're going to shift our canard and we're going to look down the line until the, the center line of the sheeting lines up with the center line on former F7. And then once you have that in position, then you can go ahead and you can glue it and you, you, you can leave it like that until the glue dries. But it's perfect. It, it, it levels it out perfectly. It gives you the proper angle and it's a very, very easy thing to do. Now, just remember, you do want to make sure that the, you know, make sure the canard is all the way forward. In other words, you got your dowel here and you got your former F4 it should be all the way forward. And as mentioned a second ago, we are going to sand that list, that little area right there on both of those saddles just to match the angle of the actual canard. Okay. Once, by the way, the way you can tell the canard is sitting properly is because what will happen when you look at the saddle itself, you'll see that the, that the canard will be sitting flush, which right now it is not sitting flush. As you can see, it's just up just a little bit, but we'll fix that. All right, friends, let's go ahead and get everything glued and more to come. All right, friends, as we continue your update, you can see we've got our canard glued in place and it's still drying, but it came out really well. We're shifting a focus to the cockpit. Uh, very straightforward. You've got uh, five pieces that need to be uh, picked. Uh, you've got F9. You can see here you've got F8. Uh, you've got F20 and you've got two F19. So we're making the actual cockpit area where we're going to be putting all the, re uh, the receivers, uh, the receiver and any other batteries that may be needed uh, Perhaps if you're running a separate receiver for your uh, separate battery for your receiver. Now, when you go to assemble the cockpit area, uh, I'd recommend taking a moment, go ahead and put F9, F20, and F8 together. Now, it's not glued yet. Just get it fitted together. It's going to be easier this way. Then go ahead, take the structure, if you will. Let me zoom back a little bit. Uh, take the structure. And we're going to carefully 
put this over top like so. And then you can see that the pre-cut slots here, it should just slide right into place for F F9 and F8. I'd even recommend going so far as to uh, actually uh, put in F8 and F9 in the slots before, before putting it together with uh, F20. That way you can make sure you get a good fit in the slots. But you can see that basically that's how it's going to look just like that. So really straightforward. This is a, just a wonderful, wonderful fuselage assembly. The holes here are important. We're gonna be using magnets, rare earth magnets to hold this in place. So do keep that in mind. And just make sure that when you're putting it together, you've got the tabs here, as you can see. Uh, for these two, these tabs are, uh, for F19 are gonna fit inside here. So just keep that in mind as you're going through the assembly. All right, we're gonna go ahead, get that all together, get some thin CA, glue that in, and continue with the rest of our formers. All right, friends, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update with the fuselage, you can see we've gotten a lot done, and I wanna tell you, this fuselage, this kit for this fuselage makes building it very easy. What's so interesting about it is right now we're looking at the top of the fuselage. So after we've gone ahead and we've put all, all our formers on and we're going to put our wing on in, in the section back in here. Um, we then take the fuselage and we flip it upside down. And then we put the other formers in there for the bottom half. And it is just going together really well, very fast. After only a couple hours, you can see how much we've gotten done. Uh, just really, really good. One friendly tip I want to pass along to you. When you go to put the stringers here, especially the first one, Make sure you really hold that nose down. Hold this part down very firmly on the table. Because this is curved, it wants to pull the nose up. And we want to be really careful about that because if that nose lifts up, it's going to change the incidence of the of this canard, which is going to affect its flight characteristics. So we, we don't want that to happen. So keep that nose uh, flat on the table as you work to glue these stringers in. So each stringer, really hold that nose down as you're gluing, gluing it in. All right, oh, one more tip I want to pass along to you before you glue the canard in. I know in the instructions it says just to add pass, leave some string there and then pass the leads through later. Don't do that. Don't do that. Before you ever glue the canard, pass your leads for your servo through now because once this is sheeted, it is going to be impossible, impossible to get at those leads. So just a friendly tip there for you. All right, friends, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, let's talk about what we've got going on here. So we've gone ahead, we, we have sanded F23, you can see there, and to match the sweep that's in the actual center section, and that fits perfectly. The only issue we ran into is that the saddles that are here that make up the uh, center section of the fuselage, and you can see them right along there, uh, those balsa saddles, there was uh, quite a bit of a gap in certain areas between the center section and the wing. And if you look carefully right there, you can see how we've added smaller pieces uh, to help fill in the gap in the largest of areas. The other areas aren't so bad. Uh, but what we're going to do is, in addition to filling in the gap, what we also did is we took the center section and we measured we measured uh, 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 the width of the, of the uh, saddles and transferred those measurements to the actual center section. And let me show you here. And you can see we've gone ahead, we've drawn some lines down the center. So to ensure we've got a good bond and to prevent any gaps at all, because this is such an important process of keeping the center section in place of the fuselage, we're gonna run epoxy right along uh, those black lines and along the actual saddles themselves. That way when we set this down, we're gonna get a good bond because when we're gonna use 30 minute epoxy, and as anybody knows, when you're using 30 minute epoxy, it can run a little, run quite a bit. So therefore, as it sort of drips down, if you will, from the center section to what's there, we're gonna have a good, strong bond. And that's one of the key things. Now, um, one thing I, flaw I did find in the kit, and I saw this on the diagram, there was actually supposed to be a dowel in the front center section here, much like there was here for the canard. And you can see the dowel right there. And the dowel helps, helps to determine proper positioning. What I realized is that they included the dowel, they, they added the hole, but they forgot to uh, laser cut or, or cut out a section in the center ribs 
where the Dow should go into. So therefore, we really don't know where it's going to be placed. But what I did to help ensure that the center section is that it has a zero degree incidence is we took this, we slid the center section all the way up uh, as far as it'll go. We'll make sure that it's centered back here by looking at the center portion here in relation to this part of the fuselage down there. And then go ahead and you're going to take an incidence meter like so. And you'll wind up putting the incidence meter on the actual plane to determine zero degrees. Now what I can tell you is that the saddles are designed in a way to automatically have the center section at zero degree incidence. So it's perfect. So it makes things a lot easier. So what we're going to do now, we're going to glue this in place. We're going to let this sit for probably overnight because I want a good, strong bond. And then we'll go ahead and we'll start adding in the other formers uh, to continue with our fuselage build. All right, friends, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, you can see we've started putting the fuselage formers on top of the fuselage. It's actually pretty easy, and I'll explain why. So this longer horn that you see right here, this is F21, and it's notched for each of the formers with regards to where they're going to be placed. The only thing you have to keep in mind is when you go through and you're putting in a former, make sure to measure on each side of the former from the previous former, meaning measure from here to the former on each side. That helps to determine if it's nice and straight, okay? Once you've got an equal measurement, then you can go ahead and glue it in. The only thing I ran into is you have to keep in mind that because you're building a wing, we know the, the shape, and uh, there could be variations in the shape, so you may have to slightly sand some of the base of the formers to get them to fit properly. A good example is if you take a look here at F12, you can see there's quite a bit of a gap there. But we're going to go ahead and use some filler epoxy and we'll just fill, those, fill that in. Anyway, uh, when you work your way to the back, you're going to have a piece back here uh, called F27. And in the instructions, it says to glue on these formers here. And this is F17. Uh, and this is F18 back there. They get glued on, but what it failed to mention uh, is that you need to glue F16 onto F27 first. So even though it's not in the instruction manual, glue this F16 onto F27 along with these other formers, and then glue the whole assembly onto the actual uh, fuselage. Now, as I mentioned before, F21, which is the piece here, has a notch but you'll need to cut the notch and extend it so it fits in the pre-cut notch that's here in F27, okay? And then, of course, once you have it glued into there, then go ahead and glue it into the actual um, fusel uh, fuselage itself as well. All right, so we've gone ahead. We're going to start adding. We've gone ahead and put our formers in. We're going to start adding our stringers along the way. One of the important things to keep in mind, and that's something that's included in the kit, is a diagram that shows you the size of each of the pieces of balsa that are going to be added to each former and from what uh former from the from and the, and the two for each of the individual stringers in terms of, of what former it's extending from and what former it's going to to extend to so a very important diagram all right friends we're going to go ahead shift our focus to getting our, our stringers in and more to come all right, friends, as we continue our update, you can see all the stringers are in place and it just looks fantastic. Let me pass along some helpful tips. Let's start up at the front, if you will. First of all, you'll notice the stringers that are here, this uh, front stringer. It's very important that before you put the front stringers on here, make sure to go ahead and let them soak in a combination of one part alcohol, one part water, equal parts, if you will. The reason for that is the water, of course, is absorbed into the, uh, um, into the balsa, but the alcohol allows the water to evaporate faster so that it doesn't cause any un unnecessary warping. Now, the reason why we, we add, put this in water is you'll notice there's a very tight curve here. So not only are we putting it in water to soften it, but if you look very carefully, there's very, very small cuts along here to help with the bend. This piece extends all the way underneath the canard, and it's important when you do bend it, try to keep it in line. You can see it right there with the, um, uh, the uh, uh, plywood part of the fuselage down there. That's important because this piece is going to be used once the airplane is turned over to help apply sheeting to the bottom half of the canard. Now, when we go back this way, let's take a look at a couple other areas. Uh, you'll notice there's a couple pieces here and here. These pieces are not continuous pieces. These are added after you've gone ahead and put the stringers in. Um, these are important because these also help, help to allow you to attach the sheeting uh, to the stringers. 
And when you're putting in your stringers, very important to make sure, start at the very top. When you put one here, put one here. In other words, back and forth equally gluing up gluing equally as you go along because you don't if you put the stringers in all on one side it's going to pull the fuselage you don't want that you want to make sure you're when you when you put one here put one here and just keep working it that way and it gives you a nice straight line all the way down now let's talk about the rear portion back in here you'll notice the stringers don't go all the way back in certain sections and that's important and the reason for that is because there uh you, and you can see it here on the wonderful diagram that they provide uh detailing exactly what stringers go where when we look at f9 you can see it there when we look at f16 and when we also look at F17 as well. So just keep that in mind. All right, we've gone ahead, we've got all our stringers in place. We're gonna go ahead and uh, begin the process of sheeting the plane and more to come.